Hello and happy hump day, folks. This is our weekly meeting here. Um, here, Mike at Marshall Motion. Just welcome you all to another hump day here. Um, again, we're meeting three times per week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at three o'clock, okay? And those sessions will be respectively one, two, and three as we go along throughout the week, okay? So we'll be moving um, towards a bit more or uh, always working our way from ground and standing and vice versa, right? As we go along, trying to relate the two and integrate different practices amongst the two, right? Um, so today, level two, we'll begin a little bit more into bridging, right? Um, so what does that mean, okay? Now, what we're doing is actually gonna start from the ground. So I'll go ahead and position my camera towards the ground here. And again, what we need is very minimal. I'm gonna keep it pretty brass tacks. Nice, maybe about 10 by 10 square feet of space, right? I prefer a hard floor, hardwood floor. Linoleum is fine as well. You can go socks. I prefer to go barefoot, right? Just because I want to make sure that I'm meeting the ground with as much mindfulness as possible, as anything, okay? So from here, we're going to go into a small walk here, okay? So let's go into what we call yoga art. Cat cow position. Okay, so we're going to stretch the wrist and the spine all at the same time. Okay, even the front of the shins. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring my thighs perpendicular to the ground. Okay, and my knees are hips width apart, and my hands are shoulders width apart. Okay, so I'm going to go my lateral view here just so you can see where I'm stacked. Okay, then going to Externally rotate to where my elbows are pointing back, eyes and elbows facing forward, and we're going to press the tops of my feet into the ground or a mat. Okay, you can go ahead and go with your mat. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and bring my chin to my chest and open the back of my spine towards the sky. Okay, I'm giving myself a camel hump here, right? Or the cat, right? The scary cat. It's the name, right? But I want to make sure I'm not rocking forward. I'm going to try and keep those femurs. Thigh bones perpendicular to the ground, and then from here for my cow, head rises, belly lowers. We'll just keep that motion for now. And while we're doing this, right, I want to stay mindful and how we're grounded. Okay, my hands, all four corners are met to the ground. Right, fingers evenly splayed apart, not too far. And I want to keep active and pressing the tops of my feet into the ground. Head up, belly down. Head down, back up. Take a nice inhalation on the cow. Belly down. And exhale for the cat. Let's go for a few more. Nice. Okay, now from here, we're going to go into our standard push up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just walk my feet back. Instead of pointing my feet, of course, I'm in my half point. So the balls of my feet are on the ground. So my hips are rotated back. So my back, legs all in one line. Okay, hands beneath the shoulders. Try and keep those elbows in nice and tight, pointed back towards. Okay, I'll face you for this one. So my elbows aren't flying off to the side like chicken wings. Right, not here. But in nice and tight. We're just going for 10. 10 tight push-ups, keeping my back and legs nice and straight, that's two, arms are nice and tight, nice, halfway there, still stretching the toes, making sure you're not just in the toes, but in the ball of the feet, nice, and time, so now from here, we're going to go into our mountain climbs, I'm going to switch both my feet, same time, we're going to bring one knee up, Ball the foot to the ground on both feet, and then I switch. Okay, try not to get too much height in my hips. Keep my hollow in my chest. Okay, 10 seconds. Excellent. Okay, now from here, we're gonna go into our legs. So let's go into that deep squat. We'll start with the heels slightly off of the ground. What I'm gonna do is bring my feet slightly wider than the hips width apart, press my palms together. And let's sink those heels down. Let's find a nice even weight distribution. Really grounding all 
parts of the sole of the feet, arms in between the legs, press the palms together, and straighten those wrists to one another. Back is straight, face slightly tilted up. Three more complete breaths in. Pause at the bottom and exhale. Pause at the top. Two more. Keep keeping my back nice and straight. I slightly tilt it up. And again, be sure to breathe into those back lungs. Face this, face the rib cage. Expand and exhale. Okay, let's go ahead. Heel toe, feet together. Heel toe, my feet together. Right, two shoulders, sorry, hips width apart. Two fists in between is my measuring stick, right? Varies for each person. Just make sure the feet are just beneath the hips. And then now from here, let the head and arms hang heavy and rise up from the base of the spine. Keeping the head heavy. You may be leaning forward slightly. Keep the head and arms nice and heavy. As you again rotate the base of the spine all the way to the top. Head rises, thumb over thumb, hands together. I'm going to raise up and back for back bend. From there, flex the wrists, arms off to the side. I'm just lowering just to show you my arms. Okay, now from here, we're going to keep our arms up. We're going to lunge in place. Okay, so I'm going down on knee, down two knees. Up, up, down, down. Now we're not coming to a full standing position here. I'm going down as quickly as I go up. Touch, 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 touch. Down, down, up, up. Again, trying to keep from leaning too far forward. We're trying to keep good, tall posture. And this is on our yoga mat here. Keep those knees nice and safe. Save your knees. They come in handy later, for sure. Nice. And time. Let's go. High knees in place. So I'm moving at my shoulders, right? Keep going. I'm gonna angle to where you can see me in standing position. My arms are moving more at my shoulders than at my elbows. I'm not chopping. I'm sprinting in place. Now I'll switch. Jumping jacks in place. On the balls of my feet. Nice and light each way. Nice switch again. Second set. All standing high knees to a set of very jumpy jacks. Try to get those thighs parallel to the ground. And switch. Here we're gonna go lateral. Flat, 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 flat. Feet together, hands together. Heart together, same time. Stretch the pecs. Switch it again. Back to those high knees. Last set now again. Keep moving, sprinting, trying to get those thighs parallel to the ground. Maybe one cheated, but we're getting higher and higher. Nice, and switch again. This time, like the monkey, right? Up, down, switching hand and feet. Going forward. Both feet on the ground, arms up. And time. Circles. Let's go for some short, tight ones. Small circle. And making sure I cross the plane of my shoulders in front and behind. And switch. Nice. Now from here, I'm going to do one palm facing down, one to clap, one palm facing up, and clap in the middle and stretch apart. Stretch those pecs. Now switch other palms up, other palms down. Stretching pecs. Keeping those arms 
parallel to the ground. Nice. And switch. Circles again. This time bigger. Big circles. Okay, go ahead and let the neck sway. We don't want to be too tight. Right? We want to allow looseness, but still stability and balance in our body. So we have a variety of motions. That's what we're looking for. Lots of different combinations of movements and switch. Going backwards, big circles. Going bigger as you go. Nice. And switch back to the legs now. Okay, this time I'm going to go for what we call our tie squat. Okay, so just like my arc, Muay Thai. Tie squats. I bring my feet side wider, hips apart. Toes face out 45 degrees from center, 90 degrees from each other. And I want to keep good posture. You can do it with hands down or hands up, it doesn't matter. Here, I want to keep good challenge, right? Keeping my heels down. I go down, when I rise up, heels rise up. And that's going up, down, right? Because what does that show, right? Maybe I'm lacking some balance, right? I have some imbalances in my body. Okay, we're going to work through those. Squeeze a little back, squeeze the butt, stick that cap raise. Make sure you're in all five toes, right? Not just on the outer toes, definitely not just on the big toe. And down with ease. Back into the squat. Then you rise up. Stick that calf raise. Watch my heels raise up, my hips round forward. Try to give you back straight. Stick the calf raise. Squeeze the butt. Engage the core. Raise that heel. Come back down at your volition. Nice. And your 10 is time. Back to standing. We're going to go over our feet. Okay. My feet will be in this position. Just slightly wider and the apart. As I angle up, and we will go into crosses. So each punch will be across. With my feet in a neutral position. Across my body. So I'm punching. Directly east, west. What's happening with my feet? Those have been here, right? Level two class. So we should know this rotation, and not just in my hip, but in the ball of my foot. Okay. So again, I'm having that relatedness to the earth. That's where my drive, my force comes from. Nice. We'll keep going with that for a while. Just feel how it is in the hips as we go along. But just kind of remind people, right, how we form our fists. So, all my fingers together, right? We're bringing together all the fingers. Thumbs come over the first two knuckles, okay? Got a square fist and a straight wrist, okay? In each direction. But I'm not totally straightening my arms when I strike, right? I don't want to hyperextend. And I want to leave more room for drive as I go through the now imaginary target, okay? Keep going. Twisting. Twisting. Again, as I go through that imaginary target, right, that's where my weapon, which is what this is, gets more compact. My fist gets tighter. My wrist gets stronger. My breath follows through. Twist the hips. More extension. Turn those hips. One hand to the head, one arm to the body. A frame in front. B laterally. And time okay now it's getting something a little more challenging now okay so i'm going to move out the screen just so i can kick behind i'm going to kick forward so matter of fact let me go lateral for now okay so i'm going to go for my teeth or my front kick okay i will be calling it teeth a lot more okay but just so we know it is a front kick teeth it's a little bit different than the japanese arts in some ways right we don't really chamber really load up too much when we throw our teeth as you know maybe some arts do because of the element of surprise okay i want to make sure that i'm extending and lifting as all in one, okay? So what's happening here, my counterbalance is my corresponding arm. So my left front kick or teeth, left arm comes down as the left leg rises, okay? Deep front. Now, put that foot back down here, side kick. Notice, toes, heels facing east-west for my side kick, right? Okay, and then for there, I'm gonna go for my back kick. Okay, which is in essence a side kick as well because my foot lands in the same position. I'm just looking behind, hands kicking. 
and then coming back to that position. Okay, so I'm going to do all three of those on each side. Okay, now for an added challenge, if you want, try to touch your foot to the ground. So forward, my toes are facing up. Side, toes facing the side. And then from here, backwards, heel and toe still face side. Okay, let's go, guys. Two minutes. Extend forward, side, and behind. Okay, give myself a little more room. Then the right side. Extend, extend, extend. Okay, all the while I want to try and keep that base foot in the same place each step of the way. Okay, I'll go lateral again. Kick, kick, and kick. Extending. Just watching some of us here. Nice, excellent. Nice. No one's switching, right? Start with those hands up. Remember, protection is key in martial arts. Protecting my consciousness. Of course, right? I need to have my sensory perception in order to be in the fight. Front, side, and behind. Okay? Now, as we go along, approaching halfway, again, trying to keep your posture as upright as possible. Not to stay totally upright, you know, because then we won't get the optimal extension, right? And just be right here, not dancing, right? You know, Lean to the side at least a little bit, again, for that counter bounce. Back. Front, side, and back. Go ahead and touch the foot if you need to, right? But the challenge is just trying to not touch it. Testing our bounce. Extend, 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 extend. You go for more challenge, don't even count a bounce. Just keep your hands where they are. Counter bounce is good because it brings brevity to my rebalance. I can rebalance quicker. Okay, but we can always test our balance as we go along. Okay, 30 seconds. Pop, pop, and release. Just go ahead and look behind too. Make sure that foot's in the right position when you kick backwards. Yes, and try and ground that foot, try to slide. Last one. Extend, 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 and back. Boom, boom, and time. Okay, let's go down to those sprawls. Everyone remember the sprawl? I drop down, but nice and low, that deep squat. I'm not just flopping myself down to the ground, because that is not safe. Hands down, once my butt is nice and low, I keep both feet back, hips down, nice slow back into that upright position. Ready, 10. And go. Nice again. Nice deep low squat. I'll do it slowly so everyone else doesn't speed. Okay. But for speed comes form. Back, hips down, keep the momentum to explode back up. Hips forward. Should be at about five now. At least. Keep those arms nice and straight. Good form. Should never not have. Hands or feet on the ground and time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab water. 30 seconds. We'll be back in. So I would say about, you know, maybe say about a liter of water. <laughs> Probably be good for class, right? Depends. Do different movements, right? We'll ask more of your body, right? But towel is good as well, okay? You can even use it for more extra cushion, but we do our, you know, a bit more precarious moves, which I'll be moving into in a little bit as well, okay? But we're gonna hit the ground, okay? So, you can use your yoga mat if you want, okay? Um, this particular part, you won't need necessarily. Yoga mat's more so to protect your back, right? Your spine, and your head. But you're going to lay it out. Let's go ahead and lay it out the long way. Okay? So, here, don't really need the yoga mat for this part here. Okay? So, I'm going to get into my crab position. Okay? Crab position. So, I'm going to angle down so you can see my feet hands. My feet are just beneath my knees, and my hands are beneath my shoulders. Okay? Just like a crab walk. We did back when we were young, junior high school perhaps, right? Or it could just be me. Okay? This is that crab position. Okay, again, arm nice and straight, 
all four corners of my hands and mess the mat. So I'm equally spreading my fingers, right? Not too wide and grounding my feet as well, okay? Now from here, it's gonna raise up, hips up, and hit back. Four bridge, right? Doesn't matter your range, we're not gonna go for the home run just yet. Raise the hips up, and let the head drop back. Okay, so here we just stretching the wrist a little bit as well. Raise up, and back down. Keep those hips up higher. But still staying grounded in all five, sorry, four limbs, right? But in all five digits. In the hands, all five toes, in the feet. Now, start to go, start to raise those heels up too. Get a higher bridge. Testing our balance a bit. Again, that's too much. Let's go back to the regular bridge. Open those hips up. Excellent. And now we're going to switch. Raise up. Bridge. Three limbs. That hand comes back down to the ground. Fingers are facing behind me, toes facing ahead of me. I raise the hips up. I swing my arm in a parallel to the ground position. My palms facing down. My gaze is at my palm. And back down. Here we're doing this nice and slow. Good intention. Make sure you ground in all three limbs with equal distribution. Not too particular about how or at which stage you breathe, whether it's in the top of the bridge for the exhalation or the lowering, just make sure you're doing both. <laughs> Actively breathing. Nice. Two more seconds. Raise those hips up. Nice. Keep those hands nice and centered. If anything, the hands are a little closer together, not further apart. And they're both on the ground. Stretch those hips. And time. Okay. Now, let's go back to standing. Okay. Grab a quick sip of water if you need. Back in 10 seconds. We're going to go into our stance first. Okay. We are going into our stance here. So, right hand, right foot. Okay. If that's your strong side, the right foot is going to turn at an angle, right? It gives me a better base in that foot. Okay. So, if I happen to get pushed back on that side, right? My foot is in a wider position to base out. Okay, if I didn't, right, it's a bit narrower, right? My balance is a bit more precarious. Okay, so what I'm going to do: feet, bring the feet together. Yep, either way is fine. Together, I'm going to turn my foot out 45 degrees, outer edge of the foot to the ground. So I raise the inner edge up, and I draw right along that 45 degree plane. Now behind me, pointing 45 in front, and I slide back 45 behind. Me. Okay, and I put the full foot back down to the ground. That is my stance, slightly wider than hip apart. Of course, as I said before, these things may vary from person to person, okay? As for your bounds, your weight distribution, okay? So now we have our foot position, okay? We're gonna go into some basic strikes for now, okay? So the strikes we're gonna go for, okay, is the jab cross, and I wanna go into that round kick, okay? Now again, I wanna try and keep that balance and turn all the way around to my original position. Now the round kick comes from a rounded angle, right? It rises up vertically and then it cuts across laterally. But of course it doesn't make that course in angular fashion, okay? It comes at more of a curve. But if I did angular, I would cut off my drive and my momentum that we started with, okay? Okay, so up, then turn to the side. I lost a lot of momentum, okay? So here I'm going to raise up and turn at the same time, okay? Now over time we'll keep the balance so we can make that full turn around, okay? If you don't have that for now, just go, you know, just small increments, okay? Even if that's just 180, okay? I just went a full 360 first time. Swing just enough to come to 180, okay? Facing the other direction, okay? My jab cross. Right here. Then I'm gonna go for my jab cross. Left kick, okay? Switch your stance to the other way, okay? Remember, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, right? My last stance is 2 o'clock. Now I'm at 10 o'clock. My left from the rear. I keep across, and I go the other way, okay? 
So facing you now, okay? Two crunches, my left and my right. Jack cross, one, two, right kick. One, two, switch, left kick. Okay, look, that foot magically comes right back to where it was if you're doing the 180, okay? Or you can go for the full 360. Just keep going while I'm explaining, right? If you need to look, go ahead and look. But for now, this is work time, right? Because uh, it makes perfect, right? The repetition is where we get better. Jab, cross. Jab, cross. Switch my stance. Kick. Again, we'll keep going. What am I kicking with? My shin, right? My foot is nice and pointed right there. So even if I were to hit, you know, relatively with my foot, it wouldn't injure my foot too much, right? We're making sure the point of contact is the lower part of the shin, okay? And that's imaginarily now, of course, right? So I'm just gonna envision something like, you know, maybe a pole right here, okay? Not a pole too hard, don't imagine that hard, right? So I'm kicking through that plane that's in front of me, okay? Right in front, almost like my spine is centered, and I go through that plane, okay? And of course, with that plane, keep going, guys. Remember, still jab, cross. And you're kicking one leg and then kicking the other. Either it's a full 180 or 360, okay? Test your balance. Make sure you stay in all five toes as that base foot is on the ground, okay? Jab cross. One, two. My hand stays in my head, right? As the other one goes away to counterbalance my kick, okay? Now, again, the slower, the better, okay? We can do it slow. We can do it fast. Jab cross. One, two. Switch and kick, all right? Again, the other side. Jab cross. One, two. Kick. Okay, that's my 180. Jab, cross, switch, and kick. Again, I'm building momentum by bringing my heel slightly to my butt. Again, while I'm talking, right, you can still keep going and turn to the screen if you need a tip. So here, heel slightly comes towards my butt, so I have, I'm loading up a bit more. My hips are already turning to add impact, right? My pivot in my foot is turning me even further, right? Now I'm also getting to extend my leg to add that third plane of force, okay, as it rises up and turns laterally. And all of those together gives me the force, and my arm acts as the counterbalance. Okay, let's keep going. Now, those that are a bit more advanced, I'm going to point down to my feet. Okay, because so it's not as though, like, you know, level one, level two, level three, like we're all going to have, we can only show up for one class, right? I want us to be able to, everyone can show up for every class, okay, and get pointers as we go along. And then we can improvise, right? What it is I'm doing, if you're a bit more advanced, you can work on a more advanced technique through an even a basic drill. Okay, so here, my dab cross, same routine. One, two, I step with my plant foot, because that gives me closer to my intentional target. Right, I step, and I kick. Okay, now for the switch, the quick switch this time, right? Instead of just hopping with both feet, I don't have any groundness to the ground right now when I, that moment in time, right? I have nothing meant to the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna slide my left foot back and bring my right foot forward, thus, giving the momentum and the ground in this for the kick. Okay, I'll do that a couple more times. Jab, cross, step, pull, kick, right? Jab, cross, slide back, step forward. But just keep it in mind, I'll go lateral now, right? I'm not sliding back too far. I don't want to lose too much ground, so we're now I'm far away from my intentional target, okay? I'm sliding back slightly, almost like just past my middle point, okay? And then I push off my foot to step forward to that round. Okay, okay, it can even be a hop, right? Like a skip. You got rhythm, you're a dancer, right? Rhythm is a dancer, right? Go ahead and skip, right? Skip and step movement, proceed forward, okay? That's the movement. Okay, step back, step forward, okay? It's a little bit quicker, okay? Let's keep going. Ah, ah. Step, round, kick, and then one, two, switch, and Time, guys. Okay, let's go 10 jumping squats. You know where we meet. Heels down, back is nice and straight. I'm gonna keep my hands up, right? And I'm gonna push the ground away as I jump. Ready, 10, and go. Remember, we jump high and land soft. So that takes core control, right? And how and when I meet the ground. Pushing the ground away with my imagination. And at 10 is time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some water and towel off. Back in in 20 seconds.
Okay, as we come back, let's meet in Cesar position. In room Cesar. Okay, toss feet to the mat. But keep my heels and my back nice and straight. So now with a little less strain this time, we're going to uh, pick up where we left off in our last class. We did get cut off in a pretty uh, sudden fashion, right? That was just in the middle of uh, uh, showing us a stretching routine and strengthening routine for our hands. Okay, so, but here's not really uh, too much form. A lot of things that I show, right, um, they will be, um, I often say um, it's a guide, not so much a rule, okay? There are some rules, some hard rules out there, right? You know, like gravity, right? You know, we can't beat that rule. But what we're doing here, I just want to undulate the hands, right? So I'm going to try and straighten my arms out all the way. And I'm going to spread my fingers, spread my digits, but not just my outer digits. I want to make sure that I'm spreading the digits that we can't see, which make up, comprise a palm, right? So I'm really going to open up and supinate, palms up, and then close. Okay, let's turn back out. Rotation in the shoulder. Big, strong fist in the middle, and then open the hands up. Starting with the pinky open, one digit at a time. And it doesn't have to be too, you know, pedantic, too, too mathematic. Just undulate and open up as you go along. Try and keep your arms as straight as you can. Again, where it stays out here, so we can focus more so on just what's actively moving in our hands, our wrists, and switch positions, okay? So here, or I'm just gonna switch my direction, open the thumb first, and go the opposite way, right? One finger at a time, really opening up those wrists to the point where the wrists are like in a flex position, right? Turn the palm up, turn the palm down, back up, open and close, undulating fashion. Nice, breathe in, Breathe in and breathe out. Keeping good posture, good form, let it burn. Nice, and time. All right, now let's get back down to the ground. You can use your yoga mask and just make sure they're in a uh, lateral fashion so you can see your body on the screen, okay? So now we're gonna go back into our technical stand up, okay? This is a really basic one, um, basic but important. So. I will be showing this pretty much intermittently throughout all levels. And it's just but it's so much of an important thing, right? It's like literally, it's actually a fighter, you know? It's, you know what I won't mention, but it's just like that one basic thing may have cost me the entire fight, you know, standing up properly and safely, okay? So, yeah, some of you may know what I'm talking about. If you're really uh, into mixed martial arts, it's a pretty recent fight, but in any event. So, here, I am going to gain my practice in my core, how to sit up properly through my combat base, okay? So my combat base is when I'm just on the ground, but in a grounded defensive and offensive position, okay? So combat base, so I bring one knee down, one knee up, and I rise my butt off the ground, okay? So here I'm engaged for ground combat. This is for someone else who is on the ground with me, okay? An effective position for grappling, okay? If I wanna get into a standing position, okay? as we go into our standing base. So I can get up a little bit more, uh, a little safer, okay? So instead of just raising forward, right? If I just raise myself off the ground, again, I'm imagining that I got pushed to the ground. We're not gonna, you know, uh, project that just now. You know, I'm gonna simulate that here just because, you know, it's not as safe an environment, okay? So I'm just gonna start on my back. And as soon as I got pushed down, if I just go right to my combat base, to someone that's standing, What's bound to happen? You know, I get my head kicked off. You know, I'm coming straight into the line of contact, okay? So what I need to do, right, is I need to lean off to the side a bit, right? And that's a bit exaggerated, of course, okay? Because my same side knee, my same side elbow are on the ground, so I have a good base, okay? I'm not directly coming forward, I'm a bit off kilter to the side. So now from there, I can put that hand on the ground and raise up safely. I still have my hand in front of me, right, to kind of keep, you know, some, keep my most danger at bay, okay? So now from there, I raise up, opposite foot, opposite hand, okay? My knee that's on the ground, that foot rises up along with my butt, and I extend the leg. Why? Because my leg is longer, 
and stronger, okay? Now from there, as I begin to stand up, right, I don't want to keep that distance unprotected now, right? So now I need to extend my hand in its place. As I turn my hips down, keep my eyes on my opponent, and then rise up, okay? I'm gonna go the opposite side, okay? It's just so I can still face my open side to you. Again, I'm down the ground, we have our break fall, okay? Here I'm gonna bring one foot behind one knee. Now again, how do we know which foot goes behind which knee? I want to make sure that both my knees, which are facing in a 45 degree fashion, I'll face towards you, are kind of ensnaring, right? Kind of encapsulating, almost like a bullseye person that's in front of me, okay? So this isn't good for a person that's over there, okay? The person's over there. I need to face my hips towards where they are, okay? They start going this direction. This literally happens in matches, okay? I'm going, going, going. They're turning, turning, turning. I switch, right? Coming back this way, I switch, okay? And I can always use the aid in my hand as well, okay? But of course, we're building our core. When we go through our combat base, to just try to keep our core nice and strong so it makes for a more efficient standing base, okay? So here again, we're going to start with just the standing base and not bringing our back to the ground, okay? Good, strong core, good mobility. One foot behind my knee. Hips up and forward. Now again, I can get two different types of stretches here, okay? I can keep my heel on the ground and get a nice Achilles stretch right here as I go forward, or I can raise my hips up and then get a nice hip stretch. Okay, back down. Okay, always, I always say, uh, work what ails you, right? Stretch, work, work your deficiencies. Definitely strengthening your strengths. That's what these drills are doing anyway. So if you're a little tighter on one hip, yeah, I'm still going to get that hip to stretch. Down on my hip. There's not really a lot of grinds on my lower back, my sacrum. Switch my feet. Okay. And again, those are a bit more advanced. I'll go to my back. Butt down, switch. Keep my hands to my head for protection. I'll extend if I need to. If they're way far away, there's no need for me to extend forward. Okay. Now, moving to our combat base. Okay. For someone that's encroaching, that's when I start to extend. Okay. They get that existence. This is the way I extend. But again, just like my punches, my thrust punches, I'm not extending fully, right? I'm keeping a slight bend in my knee. Okay, so for the timing and the distance management, once they come close, then I can extend a bit more through the target, not just at the target, okay? So, and from here, down, elbow, knee, okay? My foot doesn't necessarily have to be behind my knee. You know, it's ideal that it isn't. I want to make sure that if we're in that position, we're able to effectively come out of it, okay? So, raise up. Bring that hand beneath the shoulder so I have a better base. My hand is way out here. That's not the greatest base, right? Let me just slide and fall down, okay? So, I'm going to keep it nice and close. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Raise up with the hands and head. Extend. Extend. Keep your eye on your opponent, okay? Let's go for nine more. Down I go. Not bad base, okay? Bring that hand in. Once that elbow comes up, suck that hand in. Bring it up. Kick forward. Down. I'm working on break fall. It's level two class. Timing is in the break fall, right? I review the break fall as we go along. All right? My butt hits really low, low, low to the ground, right? So I absorb the impact of my spine. Break the impact of my hands as well. Palms down, suck that hand in, raise up, kick forward, extend hand forward as I retract, back down, my breath can add to my timing as well. Extend, extend, keep your eye on your opponent. Lean off to the side, I don't want to just come headlong forward. Catch a field goal with my head. Extend, extend, two more. Down we go. Lean off to the side, right? So I can keep them in my crosshairs. Raise up as I come forward. Kick. Extend. Right? That can be really a kick. Or I can just use it to place at their knee. 
right? And then from there, on my base foot, I retreat active. Okay. Okay, let's go, guys. Lunges in place. Okay. Knee down, knee down, knee up, knee up. Good base. Again, be mindful how I meet the ground. Especially if you're not on the yoga mat. I recommend the yoga mat for everyone. Save those knees. Up, up. Don't worry about standing all the way up. So right back down. Upright is not always the most sustainable position for combat. And at 10 is time. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some water. Back in in 20 seconds. Okay, back in, back in. Now what I'm gonna to introduce to us here, right, is just some props, okay? Go ahead and bring myself into the picture here. Okay, there I am. Well, my hair is off sometimes, okay? So what I'm gonna do is bring some props into, right? So I'm gonna just use, it could be anything, right? According to whatever your height may be, your extension. I have to use a nice, you know, little stool here, okay? To add as an obstacle. Okay, again, relative to whatever your degree is. Okay, so I can use these for my front kicks. Okay, now I know it said I don't really chamber too much, right? I don't really like to bring my heel too close to the butt. But what it does in the beginning stage, right? It trains our body to be more balanced and stronger through our extension. Right, I'm making sure it's not hitting it. Okay, raise it up, extend forward. What do I hit when I hit my front kick? Hitting the ball of my foot. Okay, so my foot is not only pointed, but my toes are flexed back. Okay, not that subtle difference between the, that's my round kick foot position, that's my front kick foot position. Okay, toes, toes, right? Extended, flex, that small position, difference in the position. Okay, so I'm picking up all of my feet by the punch. Hips forward, shoulders back, arm counterbalances. Okay, that's for my front kick. Okay, I'm just using the prop as this, but we're going to use it now for our round kicks. Okay, so just taking over, okay? So making sure that I turn that plane. And now we added what? A thing that's very present in combat, right? Danger, right? So here, right, if I, if I kick this right here, right, I take, okay. So here, right, we're not trying to actually kick an object, right, we're trying to make sure we kick over it. That's our accuracy, we're not over it, right? And seeing how slow you can do it and keep that same plane of movement Still grounded in all five toes. Kick. You just switch back and forth. Okay, because obviously the stronger side will have a bit more balance. Kick. Switch stance. Kick. Reverse switch. All right. Slide my lead back. Back comes forward. To keep the momentum, right? To kick through. Kick. Swing the arm. Right, but not swing the arm even, right? See, see if you balance this line. Experiment. This is what you do in your own time, right? You bet don't swing your arm. See how, yeah, balance is a bit more, uh, there's a lot more as for your balance in that position, okay? So that's just something to add mindfulness to how we're kicking, okay? And I don't just want to rise off the ground, I want to also make sure that I'm keeping my hip position, right? So I can have the strong hips all the way through laterally. Okay, so now we're going to go to another combination this time. Okay, so this time I'm going to go for my jab cross, and that right kick turn all the way around in with the right knee. Okay, and my right knee is not too different than my front kick, where I thrust my hips forward, shoulders back. Same thing. Again, I'm pointing my foot, right? To add forward, you know, just a bit of aerodynamicism, if you will, right? So here, point the foot, and my heel comes towards my butt this time, really towards my butt, closer than it does for my round kick. Okay, when I chamber up my round kick, I really go right up cloud, not too much further than here. I go for my round kick, okay? So again, I don't want to let my opponent know what's coming, okay? But here for the knee, I really need to make that knee nice and pointed. 
extend forward. And my hand doesn't really you know, swing too far past my leg. It can, but I'm simulating grabbing someone right by the head and pulling them down towards the knee. Okay? Same side. Keep one hand up, one hand down. Okay? So again, jab cross. Go with the same punches for now. Then yeah. turn. Stop. Step. Knee. Back to my position. One more time. Jab cross. When I throw that cross, that heel comes up. Toes facing the same direction, almost like we're on skis. Okay? Stagger skis, of course. Jab cross. Front kick. Stop. Step. Knee. Okay? Let's keep that going. We'll add the left soon. Okay? Jab cross. Front kick. Follow through. Stop. So that you can step forward to where that wherever that target is. Maybe that target's no longer in front of you, right? So maybe I stop sooner. I step to where that target is. Okay? Maybe the target's further along. I don't stop this soon. I go wherever they go. Okay? Jack cross. Brown kick. Swing the arm. That nice pointed knee. Okay? Now I keep my hips. Um, no rotation, or I can get a little internal rotation just so I can get a bit more pivot to extend that knee forward. Okay, again, depending on what range of motion we have in our particular bodies. Okay, just a couple more. Um, knee, All right? I'm sorry, we're going round kick. <coughs> the knee. Now to step forward for that knee, which is a shorter range weapon. Okay, now let's go ahead and switch to the other side this time. Okay, so we're going to kind of make a sandwich of it all here. Okay, so. I'm gonna go jab cross again. One, two, round kick. And my knee. Then from here, I'm gonna go a knee again, and then the round kick. And this time from a switch position. Okay? My switch dance. Left back, right forward, knee. And then again, that two step. Okay? As soon as I foot touch the ground, it repels my next kick. Knee, kick. You can even hear it, maybe, right? So here, switch. Knee, that two count that you hear with the knee, okay? Again, the same one, jab cross, brown kick. Okay, knee. Another knee from the switch position. One, two, knee, one, two, kick. In that quick base knee to me a full turnaround, okay? Let's go, one more minute. And this time with speed, right? We're already warmed up. We're gonna test the speed and our balance our positioning on the ground, of course, right? We're not leaning too precariously, right? We want to make sure we're all based in on all five toes. Bang, bang, bang. Step, bang, right? You know when to keep my momentum, when to stop it, okay? Be tuned into my core. Jab cross again, switch knee. Bang, bang. Full turn around, step back into your position. Slow, works, right? Sometimes we'll miss our balance. Jab, cross again, then switch knee. Then kick. Yes, yeah, more so for more advanced people, right? See where the punch and the kick's knees are related, okay? Jab, cross. Knee. Jab, cross, slow motion. Same extension, right? Taking care of having good balance and base. Right, mix it up. Jab, cross, switch. Knee, still raising that off the ground, two step. Last 10 seconds, pick it up. Last one. And time. Let's go 10 sprawls. Down, back, slowly back up. 10 more. Let's go. Again, use the momentum. Hips down, hips back up. That standing position. And at 10 is time.
Okay, let's go ahead and grab some water. Last break, and let's cool it down. It's usually the part when I ask if there are any questions. I guess it's a way to, you know, maybe mail them in. I don't know. Or I'll think of some. They'll be related to me one way or fashion. <sighs> okay, so let me angle back down towards the ground or the mat. You can go onto your mat. Okay, using it as we need it. I'm going to go to an active stretch now. Now, as we go along, we begin to progress, right? Because it's not as though like the level's going to stay to change. It's the same for level one, level two, level three classes. They're all the level's going to raise as we go along with our viewership, with our participation. Okay, we add more challenge. Okay, so I'll get a bit more to core routines, right? Things that help us strengthen ourselves and you know just help us arrive at the journey or on the road, you know, just a bit more actively, okay, and sustainably. Okay, so part of it is stretching, right? Making sure we're still limber to throw these strikes safely. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my split. I'm gonna make sure my heels on the ground. Right, heels, toes to the ground, walk the hands slightly ahead of the shoulders. Let's go ahead and dive through for our swan dives, okay? Keeping the arms, see on my elbows up, facing back. Head rises up. I leave those hips down for a nice stretch. And I push back. Chin to my chest, back into that split. That's that lateral view. Open four more. So my hips yet in the same line as my feet. Back through. Hips down. Push back. Make it nice and slow as you can. If we can do it slow, we can do it fast, right? Each take their own practice. Let's work on good form first, okay? I'm gonna move back here, right? You stay where you are. Keeping that same split position, I'm gonna walk to my right side, right foot rises, making sure both feet are still flexed. One foot's a bit out of the picture, right? Keeping both legs straight, thighs engaged, one hand's behind, one hand's in front. And let's switch. And front. Walk in that hand. There's that. And whoops. Foot goes down. Other foot rises. Both feet flexed. Nice. Now from here, we're going to go into a little bit different of a stretch now. From here, I'm going to lay my hand behind and adjoin it with my other. Good piece. Best you can, right? Maybe I don't have the range for this. Make your way down to your butt as best you can. Nice and slow. Now, before my butt meets the ground, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and push my hips forward. So I'm active in the groin, all right? Get a nice stretch in the groin, I'm keeping both of my feet flexed. Okay, think like Jean Claude Van Damme, right? Okay, but not quite, I'm not even quite there yet. Okay, <laughs> so here, I'm gonna raise arms all the way up, 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 up high, in line with the ears. Let's go down towards the right. Now, if you can, let's try and grab the foot. Okay, I have really long arms, so it's a little bit easier for me, I guess, right? I have a better range of motion now. Well, let's just say my range of motion is what it is. Okay, yeah, we're all working on our own things. So here, if I can't reach my foot, let me grab the leg, anything that helps me anchor in, okay? So I can stretch the obliques on the opposite side and my hamstring on the same side. Yeah, I'm bring my arm up and over. So my shoulders are pretty much stacked. My hips and shoulders are facing forward, okay? That's what I'm getting. Those are a bit more advanced. Go ahead and go hand behind your head. Walk the hand down the arm. And open up as best we can. Actively breathing into the stretch. Okay, little by little. Don't push it. And then from there, switch. Slowly shift your weight to the other side. Again, spines up nice and tall. Extend up towards the sky. And down to the opposite side. Okay, again, if you can, grab the foot, uh, grab the toes, right? So I have a good flex toe and foot. I reach from behind my head. Grab my opposite shoulder, my opposite hand, and then walk, fingers down the arm. 
for those of you know, maybe even more flexible than I am, right? And walk the hand to the opposite foot. And again, you know, it's, it's all relative. So we'll make sure we keep them safe. Breathe into each stretch. Ease into each inch, millimeter of the movement. Shoulders and hips facing forward. Here, let's go to a spine twist. Okay, so I'm going to bring both my knees in the bed position. Okay, I'm bring it's like my combat, um, my combat base. Okay, so I'm stuck. I'm only going to bring my foot to the opposite side of my knee. I need a good twist. I'm trying to keep both hips down on the ground. Walk opposite hand behind, opposite hand behind my elevated knee. Okay. My right tricep is on the side of my left thigh. Twist, twist, twist. Can't go that far, right? You just go ahead and hug. And hug the leg. Opposite knee, opposite leg. Try to keep the foot base. And switch. Okay, and switch. Set so on combat base. One foot time on knee. Okay, means I shift my foot over. Top my opposite thigh. Base, that same side arm, and I'm using cross. Again, I'm going to try to keep my posture upright, both hips to the ground. Twist, twist, twist. Again, depending on your range. Bring my arm behind to the side, my leg, or I can just hug. They both have their benefits. Twisting motion. Okay. So here. Okay. Let's go ahead and come into Cesar. Just again, toss my feet to the ground. Knees slightly apart. Okay, not, not going too tight. I'm trying to straighten my toes. My hand in hand. Keep the spine nice and tall. My sit bones. To my heels. And again, as my intention is in martial motion, right? We're finding motion, not just in macro movements, it's micro movements. Our air courses through our body, not just the lungs. It's not where the journey ends. Moving oxygen to the lungs. Deep into the lungs. Inhale through the nose. Out the mouth. And keep my posture and slightly tip forward. Good straight, strong, sturdy spine. Right? But not flex. Relax, jaws relax, my brows relax. Close the eyes. Have an internal visualization. Keep the air coursing through your lungs. The capillaries and delivering oxygen to all parts of the body that needs it. And expelling. It no longer serves us. We're still a part of the grand escape, part of the grand picture. So again, nutrients. Let go of what doesn't serve us. Be present with the moments, the external forces, which may act as a distraction. We recognize it for what it is, so there you go. The disturbances, distractions, come in the form of thought. Really important. Now, 
much. Let it pass. Be mindful of where we breathe and all throughout our lungs. Face and lungs, back lungs. Be mindful of what serves us. Eyes. Again, take in the presence of service to our body, mind, and our spirit. Thank you again for joining me for Marshall Motion. See you again on Saturday at 3 p.m.